Today I want to quickly show you how you can uh, create, control and reuse a fully customized fusion effect directly from the edit page. So this is relevant for things like lower thirds and reusable motion graphic effects, things that you might use multiple times in a project or things that you might use across projects. So I will show you how you can export a fusion parameter uh, back to the edit page and I will show you how you can uh, then use this effect across multiple projects if you wish. This is uh, somewhat related or at least similar to some things that I have done in a recent five hour long training course. If you are on the beginner side, I have released a completely free course on my website, uh, no payment, nothing. If you wish, uh, check it out there. I'm really focusing on moving between the timeline and the fusion page and reusing effects and placing effects and so on is a big topic in this course. Um, now to the specific example at hand, load any footage whatsoever. Here I have something from a recent tutorial where I replaced this window. Doesn't matter, any footage will do. I am starting out by adding a title effect. So I assume you want something with a text effect for this example. So the text plus uh, is my, my starting point and I want to place a music credit here. So for now I will just, I will just make this very generic and just type music credit assuming that it later will be adjusted depending on where I'm actually using it. And I place this effect already somewhere where I think it might appear, down here, and probably a bit smaller, and align it to the left. So just some, some minor adjustments. Okay, so I want to place a text element somewhat like this. Now I want this text element to appear and appear together with a graphic. So far so good. Let's go over to Fusion and do build this in Fusion and then I can show you how you can uh, control this from the edit page. If I go into Fusion by default, I have now this as a template because the text plus is one of the Fusion templates that comes by default in DaVinci Resolve and there are more of them and maybe in another tutorial I can even show you how you can create a template like this but frequently that's not even uh, necessary to go that far. So often you might just start with a template like this text plus thing um, and then modify it and then the question is only once you have modified it how can you bring your modification back. First, my simple modification, I want to bring this in, I want to uh, bring this in from the left and slide over with a graphic and I will load this graphic and this time I'm not loading it from the media pool and there's a reason for this. If you load from the media pool, whatever you do is attached to the media pool which is part of the project, right? So if you later go to a different project, you again have to bring the graphic into the media pool. In this case, I want to make something which is independent of my media pool. So I will use the classical loader node. If you press control spacebar, you find it here, loader. And this is the tool that comes from the Fusion standalone version, which was there even before Fusion got integrated into Resolve. And it still works. Um, so here I have my musical notes as a graphic and I can load this with the loader node. The difference now between the loader node and the media pool is with the media pool I am linked to the project. If my project is gone then I no longer have this reference or if I'm working in a different project I no longer have this reference. But here with the loader node I have an absolute file path here and this file path as long as this file path exists for so long I will be able to uh, use this composition that I'm creating here. So that's the advantage here. Um, now let me quickly build something. So I will uh, merge this over and actually let me first uh, build something generic. I will um, create a background here and a transparent background of the same size and merge it over this first. And there is a reason that you will see in a second. So let me merge this over the background. The reason is uh, that now I have my uh, musical note here separate on the same frame size so I can place it before I merge it and afterwards I will merge it. 
Here I also I want it in white, so I just add a brightness and contrast and bring it up. For those who have taken my course, I have done the exact same thing there, otherwise just quickly follow. So I make it white by bringing the lift up, uh, pre-divide, post-multiply to take care of the alpha so that the alpha channel doesn't um, get, uh, so that the transparent areas don't get white. Um, so now I have my, my musical note here. And I will also create a mask, just with a rectangular mask. And this rectangular mask, while looking at the music note, I will place it in a way that it coincides with the side of the note. And the idea of this mask is, and I make it bigger already, the idea is that together with this note, I will uh, hide or reveal the text. Okay, let's see how that fits together. And it doesn't because it's in the wrong place, no problem. I make this a bit larger in the first merge and bring it down. Okay, and soon you will see why I separated this. The idea here is, let me adjust the rectangle again. The idea is that I now move things um, together over the big frame. And I want to be able to later customize how I move and reveal these nodes. So first let me add a transform. And I will transform here this uh, rectangle. And this by default it goes into the mask input, which I don't want. I want it in the regular input. So this transform now can be used to move my rectangle. And you see what happens it reveals or hides the text because this mask is now being moved left right with a transform and it hides the text. Now I could move the mask itself. Uh, the reason why I use the transform is I want to use the same way I'm moving things left and right. I want to apply the very same transform to the musical note. And since the musical note is also over a frame of the same size because I moved it over this background, if I just copy this transform and apply the exact same transform, it will do the exact same thing. So I'm transforming the mask and the musical note in the exact same way. And that works because both have the exact same frame size. Otherwise, if I didn't do this part here, then my musical note here just has uh, 100 pixels and the um, frame size doesn't match and my transform won't match. So this time, I am copying this and I will not just do a pure copy, I will do actually an instance copy. You find it somewhere in the right click menu paste instance, I hope, if you, but otherwise it's control shift V, control shift V or here paste, paste instance. So copy and paste and I pasted it after this merge. And the idea of the instance is that this does exactly the same as this transform. So if I now change anything, for example, this X coordinate, you see that my, oops, my um, rectangle here, my mask is being moved exactly together with this. So I have two elements which I control with one parameter. Okay, so now what I want to do is I place this, let's say here, uh, somewhere to the end. And over the first 30 frames, I want to move this node in as an animation, maybe till here. So I put uh, at 30 frames, I put a keyframe here. And at frame zero, I move it somewhere a good portion out. Okay, so now I have my animation created and this is what it, the reveal looks like. And the reason why I moved it out here is because I don't know how long my text will be at the end. And this is the parameter that I want to be able to control later. So in order to control how far this node goes out here and how far my reveal goes, um, I will add another transform. And this is the transform that I then want to control from the edit page. So when I change the text on the edit page, I can change that as well. Um, just short reminder, if you go back to the edit page, uh, we did write the text from here. We have lots of controls here. Um, I do have now that I have created it from Fusion, I have my animation here, I have my notes coming in. Uh, the only thing what I need to control now, how far do these musical notes slide here? And this is what I'm doing now. Um, 
adding another transform for this. One more transform. And this transform, I just move the whole thing here. And I will again do an instance here. And the reason why I do this as a separate transform is that I have now um, one control which is animated, the first one here, this one is animated, and this one I don't touch, and a second control in which I just slide the whole thing to the final position where I actually need it. Now the only parameter that I need is this center parameter, and I want to add this now into this uh, template here. Um, I can do this by adding additional parameters onto this um, inspector control. And if you go on the name of any tool uh, and right click, you have here a edit controls menu. So via edit controls, you can add additional controls to the controls that are already here. I need a point control uh, which I can now use to, to change something. So let's call this um, uh, end, end position, maybe, end position. And you see it gives, it has some ID, so each um, parameter has an ID which you can reference like in scripting and in expressions and so on. Um, and then there are some different parameters. I want a point uh, as, as a type, so I want to define a point until where it goes. And here are the pages. These are the pages that you see here. So the different control pages and there is by default uh, the first one a user page. And because I am creating this as my own custom parameter, I think the user page is good. Then uh, there are uh, view controls which decides whether or not there's some something on the view appearing. I don't need this. Uh, input control um, offset is uh, I think the right one. And if you want, you can give a default value, so maybe 0 0.5, 0 0.5, uh, like the middle point, like you know the center um, position. Uh, this is up to you. Uh, so depending on what parameters you choose, you have different settings here. Uh, but this uh, should give me a point with the name end position. Let's see. Okay. And you see now one additional uh, tab here, or one additional page appeared here, and this one is called user. And on this page, I have now one control called end position, and it has a point value. Now I can change it, but it won't do anything because we haven't uh, defined what it does yet. So what I will do now, I will go to the transform here, uh, which I want to use for my end position, right? So to this transform. And here in the center parameter, I no longer want to manually edit this, but I do a right click and an expression. Now expressions are there to link parameters to other parameters or do some simple uh, like one line coding, some mathematical expressions, stuff like this. And in this case, I want to link this parameter to the template parameter. So I delete whatever is coming here by default, which is just the point that was here before. And instead, I um, write something and I will first refer to the tool name to which I want to go, which is template. And then I need the ID of the parameter that I want to reference. Uh, if you don't know IDs, you can also use this plus sign and drag onto the parameter. Uh, this also works. Now, this is self-reference. That doesn't work. Uh, this, this plus you can also use um, between tools. Then you need to like use two tools and then move up like this. Um, and actually, I can do that here. I can just go over here, but sometimes it's easier to write actually rather than using this plus sign. So this plus sign works, otherwise you just write first the name of the tool that you see here and then the name of the parameter. If you don't know it, you can, uh, like this, you can find it. In this case, we do know it because end position is what we called it. So, and that's already it. If I now go back to the template, I have this set and if I now change it, I actually change the parameter in the transform. And now I can go back to my edit page and even here I have this user tab and I can change it even from here. So now I have a text effect here where I can not only change the text, but I can also change uh, the position, the final position of these, uh, the graphic that I brought in. 
So of course you can bring in further parameters, you can even bring over uh, color parameters so you can make this user tab however you want and this is a very simple way to, to modify one of these templates. Um, you might use other templates, for example, here in the uh, effects library, there are lots of pre-built templates. Maybe you have one which you like almost and then you want to add some additional fusion nodes to it. You go over to fusion, you change it, and if there's any parameter that you think you need all the time, um, then you can expose it and uh, bring, it, bring it over. Of course, any time I can go back to Fusion and change it there as well, uh, but this way I have it customizable from the edit. Um, now how do I change it? If I want to use the same in the project as well, I can just drag this over into the bin and now I have a text plus here in my, in my media bin, which I can uh, rename music note, music credit. So now I have an effect, uh, a fusion effect inside my uh, media bin, which I can of course place again. So if I need it anywhere else, I can just place it like any clip from the timeline. Now I have created the text element that I can place anywhere I want within my project. Now how can I share it between projects? And the easiest way I can think of is to use power bins. So if you go to view, show power bins, um, I have already created some, then you have basically a bin structure which is completely project independent. So this is stored outside of the project scope and when you switch to a different project you can see it again. I have for example here is my uh, YouTube element, so when you see at the end the like and subscribe reminder, this is actually a fusion element which I created in fusion and it comes from a power bin, so whenever I need it. I can just drag and drop it into the current tutorial I'm working on or wherever I'm, I am, right? So just a simple fusion composition uh, in the power bin. So the same way if I want I can uh, just use my, my current fusion comp here, my music credit, put it into a power bin, then it's over here and on any project where I need it I can drag it into the current project. Uh, either into the media pool or directly into the timeline and then it will be available in that project. Okay, I hope this was useful for you. Um, I might talk about templates as well, perhaps in a different tutorial. If you're interested, just let me know in the comments. Also, you might want to check out the free beginner training if you are uh, on the beginner site in Fusion. Um, otherwise, see you around next week. Thanks for watching.